What's up guys? We got a bad weather day here on the Mississippi Gulf Coast, so we are not out fishing or doing any cleaning of fish, anything like that. So what we're gonna do today is show you a little bit of uh, real maintenance. And what I do when I got some downtime to keep my stuff up and running in tip top shape. Sitting out here on the porch, waiting on the weather to roll in, but I think it's already past us. But uh, out here with the dogs, and I got uh, I got my sweetheart. Here's my little Miss Stacy. Yeah, say hey, Stacy. Hey. Hey. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna anyway, we're gonna get to uh, uh, rod and reel maintenance here right quick, and show you exactly what I do. Now, well, is this gonna work for you? Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't, you know your situation a hell of a lot better than I do. So, only thing I can tell you to do is get the salt off your reels and keep them lubed. Take care of them. And they'll take care of you. We go out two or three times a week, so it's important to have good stuff and to take care of that good stuff. That for it can take care of you. Hope that makes sense. Stick with me. Hopefully I'll learn you something. For approximately six hours, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. Um, don't let them sit much longer than that because they will develop a layer of algae on them. All right, it's been about uh, six hours. We're gonna get these rods and reels out of the water, let them kind of drip dry. What we're gonna do, we're gonna take them over here to our fish cleaning table, which of course we're not using right now. And we're gonna turn them upside down. Or we're gonna turn them right side up, rather, I'm sorry. We'll lock them in because they've got the little holes here. And that's gonna allow the water to drain out. The Calcutta's got the holes here and here and it's gonna let the water drain out. So I'm gonna let those sit for a little while and uh, We'll come back to it, then we'll hit it with the uh, Safari Charlie. It's really good stuff. If you don't have any, I suggest you pick some up. It works great. And like I said, it's got a really uh, citrusy scent to it. So it doesn't eat your plastic up. It doesn't hurt anything in there. And it uh, doesn't mess with your line or anything. And it smells pleasant. Because trust me, we all got those people in our lives that say, Oh, that's just too much. That stinks. That's this. That's that. Yeah. Anyway. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Alright, y'all. This is what I was talking about. Safari Charlie Gun Lube. Now, I picked this stuff up at a gun show a couple years back. I just kind of sat on it for a while, but uh, works great. It's got no Teflon, no wax, no silicones, no gum up, no residue. And it like I said, it smells good. It smells like a uh, orange peel. It doesn't attract anything. Dust, dirt, gunpowder, uh, lifts of rust, copper, lead, dirt, grime, grease. It's just, you know, great. It's good for marine, aviation stuff, sporting goods, bikes, rifles, you name it. Jet skis, four wheelers, snowmobiles, and of course, guns. Um, there's the contact information right there. Can you see it? www.safaricharlieinc.com And it comes with a little small straw, which is perfect because I don't like those big long straws. They're harder to control. These shorter ones are a lot easier and it sticks right there in the uh, cap. And that's it, Safari Charlie. I'll check it out and give it a try. I'm sure you'll love it. It works better than just about anything else that I've tried. So. Alright, it's been a couple of hours. So we're going to flip these reels over. They've drained all the water out of them, hopefully. Um, you'll see a couple of spots. A hole there, a hole there, a hole there, a hole there. And another one back here in the back so what we're gonna do we're gonna take our safari charlie 
spray you can pop the top off of it we're going to put the little straw in the nozzle and take this straw if we give it a good shake and we're going to put it into the holes here Gonna give it a few squirts you don't have to overdo it and what it's going to do is going to get in there and it's going to clean out all the funk all the extra salt and uh, corrosion anything that could have built up from uh, fishing where we've been out there in the salt water and we're going to do the same thing on the corrado and go back in this little hole here This one doesn't have the round hole, so the straw doesn't fit very well. So you just kind of got to angle it the best you can. And like I said, this stuff is really good. It doesn't hurt plastic. It doesn't hurt graphite. It doesn't hurt the line. It doesn't hurt anything. It just cleans and lubricates and protects. This is the spot on the side with the, uh, the gears. You see this? This is the gearbox. That is where you want to get the majority of the stuff in there because it's going to clean off everything and it's going to lubricate everything. That's where all your action takes place, along with the drag and your worm gear. That is usually the first thing that goes bad, the worm gear. Now there's a gear over here on this side that spins with it. It's most of the time it's plastic and in reels nowadays so you've got to really be sure to hit this side too because if you don't you're not going to lubricate that plastic gear and that plastic gear is going to give out and your whole worm gear is going to go to shit so be sure and hit this side too but your main focus is going to be on this side where all the gears and everything are because that's where all the grease kind of lines up that's where the salt gets in that's where the majority of your problems are going to come from so we're going to leave these upside down for about 30 minutes and you know you can give or take I mean, it doesn't really matter it doesn't have to be 30 minutes it doesn't have to be an hour just whenever you get around to it just as long as you get a good spray in there and get it good and cleaned out and it doesn't matter how the outside of the reel looks just as long as the inside does what it's supposed to do if you will take care of your reels the way i'm showing you they'll last you a long time. You won't have to pay for expensive reel repair. You won't have to buy new reels. You take care of it, it'll take care of you. Call me old fashioned, but hey, that's what we did. That's what we do down here in the South. We take care of it, it takes care of us. We pull folks. Always remember, Put your cap back on, put the straw back on there so you can find it when you need it. If you lose that, well, your own stupidity kind of gives you a kick in the ass. So, with that being said, don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope you learned something today. Uh, all reels are different. Um, spinning reels, we'll get kind of get into that later on. Um, don't really use them very much. I have much better luck with the bait casters. So, yeah. If you don't know how to throw a bait caster, I suggest you learn how to because they're going to cast a lot further. You're going to get a lot better uh, retrieve. And to be honest with you, it looks like a winch for a reason. You can winch the fish in, get a lot better uh, fighting power with them. So, anyway, if you guys got any questions, feel free to put them down in the comment section. Um, otherwise, like I said, don't forget to like and subscribe. Get some more content because I'm constantly coming out with it. Uh, keep up with me because I can't keep up with you. So, I'll come back at you with some more cool stuff. We'll be ready to rock and roll, and we're going to catch some more fish. Uh, we're going out tomorrow.